Hello, baseball fans. I'm going to check this once again. Yes. Hello, baseball fans. King Icky Boo coming to you live from the underground bunker slash Dodger Stadium. And I had to check it again because it seems to be defaulting to mute. I had a game of the week already this weekend for the 1983 replay. But... And it was a great game. It was between the Blue Jays and the White Sox, the first place team in the American League East versus the first place team in the American League West. And it was a great game with a good pitching matchup. We had a triple play in the game. I mean, we had everything. And I said, hey, this is going to be a good one. People might enjoy this one. And I look and there's no sound because once again, all of a sudden, this program seems to default to the mute button being selected. So... I have to check it three times to make sure that you can hear me. But we'll have to settle for another play or game of the week. This time, we're going to play the Chicago Cubs versus the Los Angeles Dodgers in a game from July 16th, 1983. Now, these are not the first place team of the National League East versus the first place team of the National League West, but it is the two-time defending champion Dodgers versus the team they met in the NLCS last year, 1982. So that's something. And the Cubs have been playing well lately. They have, uh, let's see, I think it's five games in a row they've won. Yes, five games in a row. They're six and four, which is, you know, they had a slump before that. But let's look at the last five games. They have uh, won their last five games. So they're only eight and a half games behind Montreal and St. Louis, who are tied for first place. And the Dodgers... Uh, they've lost those two games because the Cubs won the first two games of this series. And they're at 500, seven games behind San Francisco. So uh, they have some work to do if they're going to, was it three-peat? That's the word, three-peat this season. And of course, uh, you might be saying, the Dodgers didn't win in 1982. Well, that's the replay, not the real life. Real life, of course, in 1982, the Cardinals won. Uh, the Cardinals uh, did not even come close to the... To the I'm so, sorry, ID gesture, if you're watching, but they uh, they didn't win. But they did do very well in 81. They just blew away the National League East in 1981. But last year, they were way down in the standings. But let's get this one underway. We'll go through what's happened so far. The Cubs' uh, hottest hitter in July so far has been Mel Hall. Uh, he's batting 343 with two home runs and four... RBIs, a 714 slugging percentage, and the hottest batter for the Dodgers has been Steve Sachs from MLB Network. He's batting 463 so far in July. And uh, the first game was between Steve Trout, who was 10 and 8, 414, versus Alejandro Pena, 2 and 3, 349. The Cubs won it 6 to 2. The player of the game was Warren Brewster, who had a 3 inning scoreless save to shut down any hopes of the Dodgers coming back in this game and hitting star Keith Moreland had his 10th home run and I put in red what they really hit so he's more than on his way of passing his real life home run total and Pedro Guerrero had a home run for the Dodgers he's got his 21st out of 32 real home runs and winner was Steve Trout he's now 11 and 8 and I believe he has 775 hits in 127 innings, which is not very good. And yet he's 11 and 8 with 409 ERA. And that is because the Cub bullpen is excellent. The Cub bullpen is excellent. Their starting pitchers are terrible. So it's kind of like 1982. 1982, their pitchers, they have a couple good pitchers and a great, probably a greater bullpen. In 83, they have no great pitchers, no good pitchers even, and but you know, slightly worse bullpen, although uh, Lee Smith was better. But he hasn't shown it in this replay at all. He's, he's doing terrible. But uh, anyway, I don't know. I may, better check that. Well, who's messaging me? Okay. Something with work, so I can put it off for a little bit. Anyway, so uh, in game two... The Cubs' Dick Ruthven, who just, uh, they traded Guillermo Hernandez, who's the 1984 MVP of the American League. They traded him to get him, and Dick Ruthven 
Uh, the Phillies were sneaky. He, you know, he had uh, some good years in the past, but his he's well past his prime. Uh, he's four and seven, four seventeen. Uh, he won the game though, but against Burt Hooten, who's starting to slow down too. And uh, the Cubs won this game five to one. And Mel Hall again was great, three for four with a home run and a walk. So he continues on his hot hitting in July. And the winner was Ruthven, got his fifth win. And this time, the three-inning save was by Soupy Campbell, who uh, didn't give up a single hit. He just walked a guy. And Bert Hooten is the loser. So we're going to play our third game of this series. It's a four-game series on the weekend of the middle of July in 1983 from Dodger Stadium. This game has Fergie Jenkins... 6-6-4-0-4 six six, four, oh, four versus Fernando Valenzuela, who probably F- Fernando Mania was starting to wane a little bit. He was so great in 81. He was very good in 82. Starting to slip a little bit in 83 to be more of an average pitcher. Uh, who, um, why the why that? The reasons are why. I'm not sure. Perhaps maybe had an injury or something, but still pretty good pitcher. 8 G8, G, uh, Q1 is still above, well, above average pitcher versus Fergie Jenkins, seven, G7, Q3, which is very much an average pitcher. So uh, the relievers available, Brewster is available. He has 47 innings left in the season. That's what that means. Proley has two, he can pitch in both games and he has 31 innings left. Campbell can pitch one of the two games. He has 64 and here's Lee Smith. He has 59 innings left. Craig Lefferts is available. And for the Dodgers, Tom Needenfuer is available for both games. Uh, Dave Stewart, who's pitched in the first two games, only has one more available. He has 93 innings left. That's because I think he goes into the starting rotation soon. And uh, Beckwith has 30 left. Pat Zachary is 44. And Steve Howe is eligible only as a closer. So let's look at the lineups for today's Game leading off for the Cubs and playing left oh center field today. Mel Hall batting second. The second baseman Ryan Sandberg, a nine fielder, excellent fielder. Batting third, the first baseman Billy Buckner. Batting fourth, the Penguin third baseman Ron Say. Batting fifth, the left fielder the Bull Leon Durham. Batting sixth, the right fielder Keith Moreland. Batting 7th, the catcher, Joe D. Davis. And batting 8th, Larry Boa at shortstop. And the pitcher, Cub legend, Fergie Jenkins. Although he's very much on his the downward spiral at this point in his career. For the Los Angeles Dodgers, leading off as usual and playing 2nd base, Steve Sachs. Batting 2nd, the center fielder, Ken Landro. And Ken Landro is the only player in this replay so far that has been a world champion for first three years of this replay. He was on the Minnesota Twins of 1980 who won the World Series and then he got traded to the Dodgers and he was champion with the Dodgers in 81 and 82. So he is really the man of the replay so far. Ken Landro in center field. Batting third, the left fielder, Dusty Baker. Batting fourth, the third baseman, Pedro Guerrero. Very much the main man of the Dodger lineup in 1983. Batting fifth, the first baseman, the first of two rookies, Greg Brock. Batting sixth, the right fielder, Mike Marshall. Not the pitcher, but the outfielder, slash first baseman, Mike Marshall. Batting seventh, the catcher, Steve Yeager. And when when, uh, Mike Sosha went down in the first week of the season... I'm sure the Dodgers thought they were in trouble, but Steve Yeager has done a great job, more so in the replay than the uh, real life. He's been incredible in in the replay. He has uh, upwards around over 15 home runs or 15 home runs around there uh, so far. And batting eighth, the shortstop, Bill Russell, the last of the four infielders that uh, were a part of the Dodger infield for all those years. The only one left right now is Bill Russell. And you could argue that he was probably the weakest of the four. I don't know. Maybe you're a Bill Russell fan. I'm just trying to be honest. I think he was probably the, you know, least acclaimed, I would say, of the big four infield. But he's the last one there probably because he's a shortstop. He's he's a, a good 
fielding shortstop for sure. So eight is a good rating. So maybe that's why he's the last one. And batting ninth, the pitcher, as we said before, Fernando Valenzuela. He also has a Y. So that means he has above average strikeouts. And a Q1 means he has good uh, endurance. And eight is above average pitcher overall. So let's get this ball game underway, ladies and gentlemen. Anything else I can say before we start? I don't know what we're at, and we haven't even thrown a pitch yet. But here we go. Mel Hall is up. He's batting 305 with 380 on base, 599 slugging. Excellent. He's only played since the beginning of June. He was, uh, I don't know, I think he was injured for a month. He was on the DL. He started the season with the Cubs. He played a little bit. He didn't do very much in the replay, and then he got hurt, and he came back. He's been gangbusters ever since, so... That's what, really, the Cubs would be uh, down there with the Mets. If you look at the standings, you know, they'd be def They were around there only maybe two games above the Mets until Mel Hall came back, and he's been a spark plug for the Cubs, and now they're around, there are 10 games ahead of the Mets for the all-important last place. You don't want to finish last place in this replay. That means there's a postseason also for the last place team. And right now, if the if the season ended now, we would have perhaps two New York teams. Well, we would have two New York teams in the anti-playoffs, anti-postseason, and possibly anti-World Series would be Yankees versus Mets. That would be pretty incredible. Also, you could also have a uh, all-Canadian World Series possibility if the season ended now. They would have to have a playoff between the Cardinals and the Expos, but the Expos somehow managed to beat the St. Louis Cardinals in the playoff. Possibly we could have a all Canadian world series. And I would think that's cool. I'm sure you do not as most of my uh, viewers are probably in the United States, but now we will go on and we will throw the first pitch. So here it is. It is a ground out. Here's Sandberg, 256, 10 home runs, 38 RBIs. And he has double threes, so he has a base hit, and we have a chance to steal. 11 to 26 is a stolen base, 63 to 66 is an out. So we'll take a chance, and he gets a stolen base. I don't know, how, how many is that for him now? We will look at the, at the statistics. So Sandberg, Sandberg has 33, that's his 34th stolen base of the year versus 8 caught. So, uh... He's only one year removed from his MVP season next year, 1984, but he's doing pretty well so far also in 83. Here's Billy Buck. Billy Buck, and he gets a 4-5, which is a walk. So there's two men on now for the Penguin. He's got 19 home runs, 63 RBIs. He has been the Cub MVP all season. He was the, in the All-Star game representing Chicago, so he has been an excellent pickup for the Cubs for very little cost from the Dodgers. And he gets a 5-2 double play. 5-5-3 five, five, double play. Guerrero fielded it, stepped on third, and threw across the diamond to get the double play. And the inning's over. Here's Steve Sachs batting 260 with three home runs, 26. He grounds out. Landro, we talked about him, 264-10-42. He flies out. Dusty Baker's having an off year, 216 or 219 with six home runs, 30 RBIs. He's underperforming quite a bit. He gets a first, second column row. Let's see what he can do here. 12, that's an 11. That's a base hit. He has a chance to steal. Not very good one. And he doesn't get the jump. So that brings up Pedro Guerrero. 283, 21 home runs, 56 RBIs. If the Dodgers are struggling this year, you cannot blame Pedro Guerrero. He has been everything for this team. And he grounds out. Here's the ball, Leon Durham to start the second inning. He has had an off year uh, underperforming, as you can see. He's about uh, 25 points below his on base, and he's 66 points below his slugging. And he gets a base hit there. He's not going to steal. He'll hold for Keith Moreland. Keith Moreland is also underperforming. He's about 25 points Below is on base, and he's about 64 points below his slugging. Very similar to the bull, but he does have 10 home runs, 41. And he strikes out. Joe D. He's underperforming. So all the Cubs hitters, just about, I think, except Ronce, 
Billy Buckner and Sandberg, well, the top four anyway, because we already talked about how well Hall is doing. So the top four are doing as good or better, and the bottom four are not. And he strikes out, so it brings up Larry Boa. He's slightly underperforming. And he flies out. So here's Greg Brock. Yeah, he started the season in gangbusters. Of these 14 home runs, I think he had nine in the first two weeks of the season. But uh, they haven't played him that much lately, so... And he hasn't been doing much. And he gets one there. What is that? That's uh, home run number... I should have looked. Is it 15? Yes, home run number 15 for Greg Brock, and it's one nothing Dodgers. Here's Mike Marshall. He has 10 home runs, 32. And he's overperforming. He strikes out. Jaeger, here we go. 15 home runs, 46 RBIs. His average isn't the best. His average is, you know, around his real life. But his power is definitely higher. And he has a chance to get on with an error just barely. So let's say uh, out in center field there, Mel Hall bobbled it, as Stratomatic likes to say, bobbled it and grabbed it with his bare hand for the out. That's what happened there. Anyway, here's Bill Russell, 207 hitter, one home run, 10 RBIs. Yes, he's not really contributing much offensively, and he fouls out. But the Dodgers get the first run of the ball game. It's two, one to nothing after two. Here's Fergie. Fergie walks. We'll pick up the pace now. Here's Hall, fly out. And single, so we will not attempt to steal with a man on third. We'll leave Buckner's a fast runner. We'll let him fend for himself, try to stay out of the double play. Here's Billy Buck, 314. So he's having a very good year. 10 home runs, 67 RBIs. He is in the top 10, I'm sure, in RBIs in the National League. Let's see... My computer seems to be running slower than it usually does lately. So he's third. In the National League in RBIs. So he's see if he can add to that total here. He doesn't. He strikes out. Here's the Penguin. And the Penguin strikes out here as well. So Fernando, he has... How many strikeouts? Four strikeouts already. So he is primed for a good game here today. He's at the plate now. And he strikes out. That's strikeout number two for Fergie. Here's Sacks. He flies out and base hit for Landro. He's going to try to steal. Doesn't get the jump. Brings up Dusty Baker, who's one for one. And he gets a possibility of an error. No error. So the inning's over. After three, it's still one to nothing Dodgers. Here's Bull Durham. He is oh, he's singled last time up. And he strikes out. Strikeout number five for Fernando. Here's Keith Moreland. Foul ball and he gets another roll. And he grounds out to the first baseman. By the name of Greg Brock. For the second out, here is Jody Davis. And he gets a ball, another roll. And he gets a base hit with two out knock here in the fourth inning. But Larry Boa is up. He's not very good. So, But we'll still put on the brakes. I just hate when they get thrown out of third with two out. I don't think anybody likes that. So we just put on the brakes for everybody. We do for all teams. Anyway, here's Larry Boa. Flies out, and the inning's over. Go for the Dodger fourth. Pedro Guerrero, he grounded out first time. Error possibility, no error. Pops out to the shortstop. Greg Brock, who has the only run in this game with a homer in the second inning. He grounds out, and a base hit for Marshall. He's going to try to steal, doesn't get the jump. He's a slow runner, so we put the brakes on him. Of course, if it's a double, he can try to score. This just prevents that first to third throwing out it on a single. Here's Jaeger. And he has a wild pitch. So the runner's in scoring position. He, it seems to me he hasn't homered for a while. So he hasn't homered in his last 10 games. He hasn't homered since June. So he really had a great May. And uh, power-wise, okay in June. But he's tapered off lately. So, let's see what we can do here. Now, Russell is on deck. So, I think we're going to walk him. Because what Russell really has no power whatsoever. So, we'll put him on. And hope for the best. And it's a ground out. So, after four innings complete, it's still one nothing to dot for the Los Angeles Dodgers. Here's Fergie. Fergie grounds out. Mel Hall gets a double 
three, and he's in the second column. Let's see what he can do with it. 25, that's a two, which is a triple. So Mel Hall is on third base with one out, and Ryan Sandber, uh, Sandberg is up. They're going to bring the infield in. Here's the pitch to Rhino. Sacrifice fly. He hit it in the air so that infield in had no effect. And the game is tied at one. So Rhino gets the RBI and uh, evens the score in this one. We have a brand new ball game. Here's Billy Buck. He is walked and he has struck out. And he grounds out this time. So brings up Fernando. Fernando versus, versus Fergie Jenkins. And he gets on with an error by Jody Davis, a wild throw, and he reaches first base, and he's not going to try to steal. So he's on first. He's a slow runner. We only put the brakes on two out. Uh, Steve Sachs is up. He strikes out. Landro grounds out to the pitcher, but Fernando advances to second. So it was a little dribbler, and Fernando had some heads-up base running to get to second base, and brings up Dusty Baker with a man on in scoring position with two out. Certainly a base hit will score the run here. He gets more than a base hit. He gets double sixes, so he has possible home run. 36. It's a six, so the run will score for sure. And we have a possibility because Fergie is an L, so he has a possibility of... The ball leaving the ballpark. 11 to 44. Here's the first roll. It's 35. It's within to 11 to 44. So now Fergie, it's on him. And it's just over 26, so it's not a home run. But the ball goes into the Ivy for a ground rule double, and the Dodgers take the lead 2 to 1. And brings up Pedro Guerrero. Brock is already homered, but the odds are that... You know, he's not going to homer again, so I'm going to put him on. I don't mess with Guerrero. He is dangerous. Here's Greg Brock, and he pops out. So after five complete innings, the Dodgers lead 2-1. to one. Fernando's still going strong. He has an adjustment in the eighth inning. means unless he gives up four runs in two innings, four earned runs in two innings or three innings, Two or three innings. I forget which it was. I think it's two complete innings. He will stay a C rating until the eighth inning. Then after the eighth inning, he gives up two base runners. He goes down to a D and is officially tired. So he's still going strong. And here's Ron Say. He is 0 for 2. Hitting a double play and struck out. Not a very good day, but he walks this time. But he's very slow runner, as you imagine a penguin would be. Here's Leon Durham, 1 for 2. He, oh, that's the worst roll in the game. A 1-2 which is almost a certain double play. And it is. Double play ball. Threat over. Here's Keith Moreland with two out, nobody on. Pop out. So the inning's over. Now Fergie, he is down to a D. His downgrade was a D. So it's not adjustment. It's a downgrade. And I may be talking to people who know this game very well. But downgrade means it's automatic. You don't have to wait for two base runners in the six. If it was adjustment six, he'd still have a chance to be at C until two base runners reached and then he'd be downgraded. But here, a downgrade is an automatic downgrade to a D. So he is tired. And the other things, L, we saw the the detriment of the L. The Z is good though. It uh, takes away walks. So, but we have lots of relievers available. We'll bring in Proly at this point. Uh, we could double switch, I think, uh, Johnstone. But, you know, we don't want Proley. He only has 31 innings left in the season, so we don't want to use. And what I do so many times, I always want Proley, and I pick Bordy instead. Bordy only has, he's horrible, but so many times I pick, I th okay, I'm going to bring in Proley, and I bring in Bordy. I don't know, I get them too mixed up. But anyway, this time we make sure we select Proley, he is one for one with a 157 ERA. He's much better than Bordy. So it's not to my advantage to bring in Bordy. He's 8-2. So uh, he has a downgrade automatic at 11. So 11 for the relievers, it's 11 plate appearances, not innings. So he can pitch three innings. If he goes three perfect innings, he will still stay a C. But you know, adjustment start in the ninth batter. Hope that's clear. Anyways, facing Marshall. 
And Marshall flies out to right. Here's Jaeger. Jaeger gets a base hit. 50-50 chance of stealing, but we won't risk it. And brings up Russell. Russell fly out. And Fernando is still C, so he still stays in the game. He can, and he proves that he can get on base a little bit anyway. And he grounds out. So after six, it's still two to one. Here's Jody Davis. He grounds out. Larry Boa. He walks. He's going to try to steal. 45. Not good enough. Brings up Proley. Should we... He's still going strong here. But like we said, we have lots of pitchers we can use. We only have two games left in the series. That's one thing I try to do. And people have criticized me because in the first game of a of a like say a four game series and you hardly have any pitchers available i'm going to leave the the starter in longer than normal to save these relievers especially in a 10 nothing game or something i mean what's the point of using up your valuable relievers you might as well let this guy he dug this hole he's gonna to have to get himself out of it he's gonna to have to take his lumps the starting pitcher so that's my theory, and people say, wow, you know, you're leaving a guy in for, for eight innings. He's given up 13 runs. You know, that's great managing. Well, that's the reason why. I'm trying to save these run these valuable relievers for a game that's close. And this one's close. So he's coming out, and I look at who's available. Verizer is available, Morales, and who else? That's it. Now, I do look at the other. See, I have I know in the first game... Thompson and Johnstone were available, and Thompson's just terrible. And I want to make sure that Thompson gets close to his real life pit. You know, that's that's a thing in these games. You can cheat, right? You got this horrible hitter, Thompson, and he was great in 82, but 83 he was just dreadfully bad at 193. So as a Cub fan, I could say, well, I'm not gonna ever gonna bring him in. I'm never gonna bring in uh, Thompson because he is terrible. Because I wasn't going to bring in the good guys, you know. But that's not the way. I try to play it as straight as possible. So you can see here if I look here and uh, bring in Scott Thompson. Scott Thompson has 82 at-bats. So he's very close to his real-life total if he's not already there. 82. Uh, he has 88. So in the rest of the season, he only has to get six. Hello, son. Six uh, at bats left in order to reach his full his full at bats for the season. So I try to play it straight. Anyway, so I'm gonna bring in Verizer, I guess. Who's better at getting on base? I don't think anyone is very. Oh, he's a little bit better. So Jerry Morales will play today. Jerry Morales comes in and to face Fernando with a man on. One out. Here's the pitch. And he hits him to a double play. So that's it for the Cubs in the seventh. Now we have to bring in a new pitcher. We'll bring in... Well, Proley was in. So we can bring in Lefferts. Lefferts. There he is. Lefferts to face Steve Sachs, Landro, and Baker here in the seventh. Ground out. Strike out. And a fly out. So he does well. Okay, Fernando still going strong. But this is his last inning. Well, this is actually his adjustment inning. So the first two runners that get on, he'll go down to D and he'll be tired. But the Dodgers also have lots of pitchers available. All right. Here's the pitch to Hall. He strikes out. Sandberg flies out. And Buckner strikes out. So he's doing well. Might as well leave Lefferts in in spite of this horrible M. He's doing well, though. 53 innings pitch. 187 ERA. I, I've been saying the Cubs have an amazing bullpen. Even though he has been tagged with this M, it hasn't hurt him at very much. He's still, you know, he's a 9-2, which is excellent. But that M means he gives up more home runs than normal. But it hasn't hurt him yet. But it, it could hurt him against Pedro. Let's see. Nope, he grounds out. Brock strikes out. And there's a lot of strikeouts in this game. How many strikeouts have we seen? We've seen seven for the Cubs and six for the Dodgers. So at this point now, we're going to bring in the closer. 
Steve Howe. See if he can get the save. It's the way I play it, because he's given up one run, he is eligible to be relieved. That's what, If he's pitching a shutout, he must stay in. But Steve Howe is the closer. He uh, How many saves does he have? He has 18 saves in 22 opportunities. He's just back from rehab, and he's pitching well. 3.29 ERA, although he's 0-3. First pitch, possible error. Flied out, Leon Durham. He has two balls, no strikes. And he gets a base hit, so the tying run is aboard. Durham is not an S runner, so we won't pinch run for him. Here's Moreland. He's got a lot of good stuff here. He's got an X, which means more strikeouts. He's got double Z, which means he walks nobody. And you can see he only has two walks in his 28 innings. And an H means he is very good at nullifying the home run. Though he's a DP minus, which means he's probably a fly ball pitcher and doesn't give up many double plays. And it's a base hit for Moreland. So they have two men on here in the ninth inning. And that brings up Jody Davis. He is one for three. Has one of those seven Chicago strikeouts. Here's the pitch to Jody. A double play and the game is over. So the final score today, the Los Angeles Dodgers two. Two runs, six hits and no errors. And the Cubs one run, seven hits and one error. The winning pitcher is Fernando Valenzuela. He pitched very well. He gave up five hits in eight innings, one run, four walks, and seven strikeouts. The loser is Fergie Jenkins. He goes to six and seven, and he gave up five hits in five innings. Not too bad. One, only one earned run, and uh, walked two and struck out three. The hitting star for the Dodgers, probably Dusty Baker, who is two for four with an RBI. And the Cubs, probably Sandberg, two for three. And a stolen base. So that's it for today's game. The 1983 replay. Best of the 80s replay. Game of the week. The final score again. The Dodgers 2 and the Cubs 1. We'll see you next time. Goodbye everybody.